Welcome to this two-minute techie tip brought to you by the St. Robert St. Swad, students actively involved in networking and technology. This is Mary, and as a St. Squad member, my goal is to increase student achievement through the use of 21st century learning and technology and through the assimilation of the career-ready skills of communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. We also want to promote a digital culture at our school by creating versus consuming content and publishing versus printing. So let's get started and learn how to use Gmail. So, when you sign into your school account, there are tabs up here. You have search, images, mail, drive, calendar, sites, groups, contacts, maps, and more. This is this video will be focused on the mail. So, when you first go into your mail, you're in the inbox. The inbox is all the emails that you have received. So, for example, I received an email from my friend Caroline because she wanted me to edit some of her work. The other inbox is in starred. I haven't started any messages, but if you have any favorite messages, like this one from my English teacher, and then you star it, it will go into star, and you can, it's a quick way to access important emails. This is also important. You can also do that for, and usually an important email is one from your teacher. So since my literature teacher sent me this email, it's been marked as important and you can tell it's important by the yellow arrow pointing to it. The sent mail is emails that you have sent. So for example, I sent to my math teacher because I didn't know if it was out of uniform that day or not and she could just reply to me. The drafts, every, every time you start an email it will save automatically and it will go into drafts so you could stop your email if you wanted to research some stuff that you were putting in it or whatever, you could save it as a draft and then come back to it. Um, you can also chat. So if I wanted to chat Mallory, I could just say, I could say, uh, just a second, I could say, hello, what? The science homework. Something new Spelled homework wrong. Um, and then you press enter. Yep. You press enter, and then you can just chat right away. Another thing that you can do is. Um, all mail, which is what is important, what's starred, what you've sent, what's anything. Um, the trash is what you've thrown away. I haven't thrown anything away yet. Well, I have, but it deletes 30 days after you have already deleted it. Spam is stuff that you get from companies, which isn't good. So that's why they say, hooray, no spam here. And if you do end up getting a message that's spam, you shouldn't reply, and you shouldn't open it if you don't know who it's from, and only share. Yeah, so don't, and if you do get an email from someone you don't know, tell a teacher or an adult, and they'll help you. It may not be serious, but it's worth telling them anyways. Labels are, this is just the stuff that's on the side and so that you can label something. And so these are all my friends, except for some of them who are teachers, but they're still my friends. But these, this allows you to chat with them or email them. So if I don't know what the science rubric says and I need someone to help me, I can compose an email. And then I can email my best friend, Elizabeth. <laughs> and usually... <laughs> It just pops up because that's how smart Gmail is. So there's her email. And subject, I can say science. 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 Help. And so I can say, hey, Liz. 
What is on the rubric? So as we talked about before, automatically it's saved into the draft. So here is my email right here, and I can just open it. So if I wanted to check in my drive if the notes were there, I could check there before sending the email to make sure I didn't look silly. So, um, if I wanted to delete anything, so then to send an email, there's a little button down here called send. And also you can edit it, so formatting, you could change the color, so if I wanted to make myself sound desperate, I could change the color to red. Oh, that's a highlighting color, but you can do that too. You could change the font. Um, you can change the size. You can bold it, italics it, underline it, make it bullet points, make it numbers. Make it centered. Make it have these big quotation marks. Um, or just remove all that formatting. Why not? You can also add links or files. You can attach files. So these are all the files on my computer, but I don't want to attach a file. You can also add files from your drive. So if I wanted to show her that there was no nothing in science, I could do that. I can take a picture of myself and show her that. I can insert a link to a science thing. Um, I can insert a little emoticon, which is fun, but <laughs> it's just fun. So here's a radio. That's really cute. Um, you can add an invitation. So if I wanted to invite her to like an after-school study group, I could do that. And then... Right here is the trash month, so I don't have to send this. Then I could print the email. Um, so the invitation. And then once I'm done, I say, and then I say my name. And then I send it. Yep, so you press this send button, and you send it. And when you send something, you can't unsend it because you can delete it. You can delete it on your account, but you can't delete it on the other person's account. So whenever you post online, it's permanent. Um, and you should always use email responsibly. It always has to be work-related. So I couldn't just start chatting Mallory and I couldn't say, Hey, what's up, girl? I couldn't do that because it always has to be work-related. Never share your name, school, age, phone numbers, or addresses with anyone. So I shouldn't, um, if someone new came to our school, I could say my name. But like if I was sending an email to a professional, um, interviewing them, I wouldn't say, Hi, my name is Mary. I go to St. Robert. I'm 13. I wouldn't tell them my phone number or my home address because you don't know what they're going to do with that. You should never send a picture to a stranger because you don't know what they're going to do with that. You should always keep your password private, which is why I'm not telling you my password, but you can share it with your parents because they're not going to do anything with that. Except, like, open your school account, they're not going to do anything bad. Um, never open an email from strangers, which is what G we just said. It will go to spam, or you can just delete it and um, immediately tell an adult if something weird or creepy happens. So, like, if you see that you've sent an email that you don't remember sending, you should tell um, you should tell a teacher or this is Yingling or any adults, your parents. And you should always be polite, so I probably should have said in this, I probably should have said, please help me with the science. I should have just said, hey, give me the science. Um, and then if she sent an email back, I, I should say thank you. You should always be positive, never be, like, never in sh emails, you should never be negative and make fun of someone, but what, like, Whenever you're commenting on someone's work or emailing them, you should never be negative. Never say, oh, I don't like this. Um, don't email an, inter an email from anyone you don't know. So 
you should probably check with the teacher if see if they know it because you don't know it. Um, don't respond to them if you don't know them. Um, only share your email with people you know. So well, since I don't know you, I'm not sharing my email with you because I'm you don't know. Because it could get a little weird so when they you email back and forth. An email is not reliable, so you could receive an email in your inbox that is not from a teacher or other students because a lot of people have access to our emails and we don't know it. Like, you can search it sometimes. Um, and remember that even if you send something inappropriate to another student outside of school, like you're not in the lab, you're not using the cow, you're not using the school iPads, you can still get in trouble because it's still on your school account. You should only be using your account for school. So, that is all about Gmail from the St. Robert's Saint Squad. Thanks for watching this two-minute techie tip on Gmail. Please share the skill with others to promote a digital and mobile student-centered learning culture in your classroom. And remember to create more than consume and publish more than you print and to highlight the efforts of all digital learners. Thanks. Have fun emailing.